Well, we just want to welcome everybody, man. It's good to see you all here at our uh, here at our campus in Florence, man. Can we welcome everybody in Lawrenceburg? It's good to see our Elberg family in the house. Come on, let's welcome them. We got some people meeting over in a building in Shoals at our Shoals campus. Come on, let's welcome them. And everybody else who's watching online, whoever you are, wherever you're watching from, want you to know, man, it's so good to see you. Just trust that God's doing some good things. Well, welcome. Come on, Happy New Year, everybody. I know it doesn't feel like January. It feels like June, but it really is January. It's been such an odd month, but it's that time of the year. And let me ask as we step into a brand new year. I'm curious, how many of you have already decided or set or pondered a New Year's resolution? Wave your hand at me, Lawrenceburg. Come on, you, you think some of you are lying. I know it's not popular like to say the term. It feels dated and weird, New Year's resolution. If you just had the thought like, it's a new year, it's a new me. That's, you can call it what you want. That's a New Year's resolution. Hey, it's a new beginning. It's a new me. So let's try it again. Hi, people. I'm not saying you've made the commitment, but you've pondered some things you need to change, some stuff you want to adjust, some resolutions you need to make. Lots of us. Uh, you know, and I, I think at the end of the day, every year, and there's different seasons and times, we begin to make those kinds of decisions. We're going to change some things. We're going to adjust some things. And as we step into 2022, they've already come out with the top four or five things that people are deciding that they want to adjust and change. Here are the top 2022 20, New Year's resolutions as they've come out. First of all, people are saying that they want to lose weight. Don't raise your hand if that's you. We, we can see it. I'm just kidding. I'm talking to me, not you. I'm talking. Some of you are saying they need to exercise more. Some people are saying that they want to save more money. Uh, some people are saying that they want to spend more time with family. I think that's a good one. Some people are saying they want to spend less time on social media, which is funny because it's often those people who are posting they want to spend less time on social media on social media. And then they respond to all the people about spending less time on social media, on social media, which means you're not spending less time. You're literally spending more time on social media. My favorite I thought was really cool, one that came up this year. I don't know if I've seen it necessarily in the past. Maybe I just passed by it. But one of the major resolutions that people are making for 2022, they're saying this, that they want to, they want to give more and they want to work more um, for charity and nonprofits. Like people are recognizing like my life is, is bigger than just me. I, I, wanna, I wanna make a difference in my life. And I just wanna just issue the challenge to our faith church family. I think the hallmark of a Christ follower is generosity, of recognizing that what we have, our strength, our resources come from the Lord and the way we honor God is by using those things to glorify him. And so I just wanna just tell you, if this is, this is your house, this is your home, this is your church. Number one, I just wanna challenge you to be a giver here of your resources and two, of your time. We can't do what we do without literally hundreds of people, especially as we get ready to, to plant our new campus in the Shoals officially here in uh, just several weeks. We need lots of people saying, man, I'm gonna give a slice of my time in production and guest services, uh, loving our children, being a part of our teenagers. And so if you're not serving somewhere, if you're not on a team, can I just issue the challenge, man, to be like, let's pave the way as Christ followers to set the pace of what it looks like to really being givers and making a difference in the world we serve. How many people's on board for that? I just got to tell you this, I don't know if you, you saw it, but man, because of so many people's generosity and ultimately because of the goodness of God, uh, we were able to purchase a building on Old Route 72 in Tuscumbia that we are going to quickly get into, begin to renovate, that we're going to step into, our Shoals campus will step into a brand new building, hopefully in January of 2023. Come on, somebody, God is good. He's on the move. Come on, I just, I just want you to know, man, God is up to some good things. And so at the end of the day, as we make resolutions, as we make changes, as we look at our lives and we think about some things we need to do different, at the end of the day, I think it's all behind this. Behind every resolution is regret. Behind every resolution we make is just a little bit of regret. There's, there's some, some places we look at that we're just not as happy as we think we could be. There's some discontent. And we look at it and we think, if I adjusted that, if I invested more in my family, if I adjusted more stuff. Every year, the same four things come up in resolutions. It, it always comes back around health, relationships, finances, and career. Like every year, it's kind of the same pattern because people are looking at their lives saying, you know, I'm, I'm not as happy as I want to be. And if I just did more with my family, if I adjusted my finances, if I made more, saved more, gave more, I would be happier. So the resolutions is driving and exposing in all of us that there's a little bit of discontent and unhappiness. But here's what I know is everybody wants to be happy. Nobody would say, if you interviewed 100 people, 100 people would say, I want to be happy. 
And if they didn't want to be happy, then they're happy being unhappy, and therefore they want to be happy. But no matter how much we want to be happy as people, as human beings, Lawrence Burke Scholes, Florence, we all want to be happy. Statistics tell us, research tells us that about 70% of people today say, I'm not happy. That there's some area in their life, there's something out of kilter, there's something out of whack, there's something not right. That kind of when they wake up in the day, maybe this is you, you look at your life and you're just not really fulfilled and not really happy. And so we're pursuing that. And again, it pops up at the first of the year because again, we're going to make adjustments and resolutions, but kind of there's this thing in all of us. It's like, if I can own that, if I can marry them, if I can look that way, like I would just be more happy. If I could just own that car, if I could just own those shoes, if I could just, you know, own that device, if I could be married to them or not be married to them. I mean, like I would just be happy if I could look that way, if I could nip it, tuck it, Botox it, I would be happy. And what we find out is, is that this desire to be happy is a God-given desire. But the reality is, is that only God can fulfill it. In fact, when I tell you it's a God-given desire, here's what Jesus said. These are the words of Jesus about this pursuit of happiness that all of us are on. Here's what Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10. Come on, Lawrenceburg, Shoals, Florence, everybody read it together. Jesus said, my purpose is to give them, us, a rich and satisfying life. How many people want a rich and satisfying life? Wow, what a promise. Well, here's what's crazy is that promise starts with God. It doesn't start with you. It's what he wants for us. Now, in order to have a rich and satisfying life, like we have to navigate is what we're talking about, what he's talking about, because the way you think you get a rich and satisfying life might be different than his. And so in order to navigate, how do we, how do we get there? What does it look like? We're going to lean into Psalm chapter 1, and Psalm 1 is the first psalm in Psalm 1, which is why it's called Psalm 1. That's free. I went to Bible college for that. That's free. Just just tuck that one away for later. We're going to lean into Psalm 1, and the reason Psalm 1 is so powerful is because the, the writer, David, King David, he gives us a description to duplicate that all these things were changing and adjusting and tweaking, these resolutions we're making in our pursuit of happiness, David steps back and he holds up for us this beacon and says like, hey, this is what it looks like. If you wanna find contentment, if you wanna find happiness, then this is how you get there. This is how you achieve that. And it starts in Psalm 1, verse one, the first word, I want us to read it together. Here's the word, one, two, three. Now, if you said blessed, you've been in church too long. Because some of you said blessed. Nobody says it like that except crazy church people. If you go, if you leave here today and you're like, hey, you know, I had a great day in in church. I confessed my sins and we worshiped and pastor preached a good message. No, it's blessed. Everybody say blessed. One, two, three. Hi, people here want to be blessed. The word blessed means content. It means fulfilled. Here's how you find fulfillment. Here's how you find, and the cool thing is you can't see it here, but the word blessed in the original language of Hebrew is actually, uh, it's actually plural. So God doesn't want you to have joy. God wants you to have joys. God doesn't want you to have happiness. God wants you to have happinesses, which I know is not even a word, but God can do whatever he wants. How many people here want some joys and some happinesses? Come on, Lawrenceburg. Come on, we want God. We want to be blessed. Well, how do we get there? How do we do it? What do we tweak? What do we adjust? Well, here it is. Here's what a blessed person does. Here's the description that we're called to duplicate. Let's read it together. Blessed is the man or woman or person who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Now, what I want you to notice right away is that There's some things you got to say no to before you can really say yes to some things. In fact, if you don't say no to the wrong things, your yeses really won't matter. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Some of you have figured this out, and some of you haven't figured this out yet, and I'm about to help you out. You can't outwork a bad diet. Some of you have been going to the gym for years, and you look exactly the same because after you go to the gym and kill it for an hour, you're on the you're on the cardio. And like you're jacking up some weight and then you leave and you go to McDonald's. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to me. Steve, you can't work out and eat eat donuts. Those two things cancel each other. You can't. So what I'm telling you is God's saying, okay, listen, 
Happiness is something I want you to have, but in order for you to have it, before you say yes to happiness, you have to say no to some things that's causing and creating and generating in our lives some discontent, some unhappiness. And he tells us what those are. And notice what he says. He says there's kind of three. There's kind of these three areas, and I think they impact all of us. He says, first of all, he says, some of you, you got to start saying, no, we can't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. He says, you got to start saying no to some bad advice. When you're in a place of making decisions in life, who do you turn to? Now, I know some of us, were real introverts, and we don't really talk to anybody, but here's what you need. You can give yourself bad advice. And some of us, man, we just kind of throw it out there. I love people who post on social media, like just, hey, I'm getting ready to start this new career, and like I can be a veterinarian or I can be a dental hygienist. What do y'all think I should do? Are you kidding me? You're just casting it out for the world of who you should date, what school you should go to, what career path you should take. What I have found out is if you listen to, if you listen to everybody tell you what to do, you'll likely never fulfill what God's created you to do. Now, if you're just trying to figure out how to build some floating shells and how to paint a wall, Like you can, you know, I'll take advice like that from anybody. But the reason some of us are in a bad place in life is because we're taking counsel from the ungodly. We're listening to bad advice. Let me just help you out. Find people who are living at a level higher than you in an area of life you want to succeed in and ask them how to do it. If you want to figure out how to have a successful marriage, stop talking to people who are bad-mouthing their spouse and on the edge of divorce. Find somebody who's been killing it for 50 years and ask them, what's your secret? Find somebody who's successful in business, and they're hard to spot because what I have found out is rich people don't, if you think they, if they look rich, they're not rich. They got a lot of debt. Rich, really wealthy people are hard to spot, but if you find them, hey, how did you succeed in business? But the more important the decision you're making in life, your life partner, your career path, your walk with Christ, the more important it is that you don't listen to the counsel, the bad advice of the ungodly. It's important that we lean into people who have wisdom and like, what what does God have to say about this? What's God's word have to say about this? And so some of you are in this place and the reason you're struggling and you're not walking in happiness is because you've been listening to all the wrong people about all the wrong things. And here's what I know is that our discussions lead to decisions and our decisions lead to ultimately destinations and directions, which means if we wanna change the places we're going, it starts with the conversations we're having. So who are you talking to that you need to stop talking to and who is it you're not talking to that you need to start getting some wisdom and advice from in order to find some blessings and some happiness and some peace in 2022 walk not in the counsel of the ungodly who's the bad advice you need to stop listening to here's one he says not only should you not walk in the counsel of the ungodly he says that we're not to stand in the path of sinners He goes from bad, bad advice to bad associations. Question is, who are you running with? Who's in your crowd? Who's in your crew? Who's in your ride and die? Who's who's watching your six? Who's got your back? Because Paul says it this way. He says, bad company corrupts good character. You are who you run with. You are who you hang out with. You are becoming the nine people close to you in your life. That's a fact. And so if you don't have the right people in your circle, you will inevitably end up in the wrong direction. And so he says, he says, we got to be careful. If we're going to find real peace and contentment, if we're going to really walk this happiness journey out, you can only get there with the right people by your side. And so here's the question. Who is it you walk with in 2021 that if you're going to find happiness, you got to leave them there and go into 2022 without them? Come on, somebody's just like, there's some, right now, you didn't even think about it. A name popped in your heart. I'm saying y'all need to write that name down and go home and burn it. I don't know what that means, but just burn, just burn the name. Delete them. I'm telling you like, well, it'll hurt their feelings. Well, I'd rather hurt somebody's feelings than hurt my life. Now, I'm not saying don't have people who need Jesus. Jesus hung out with lots of people who were ungodly. But the purpose that Jesus had in hanging out with people like that was to make them like him not for him to become like them if the people you're running with is shaping you more than you're shaping them you're with the wrong people and so again this is pursuit come on if you want to be happy you got to ditch some people to be happy i i've shared this so many times standing on this platform and the reason i share it is not to be redundant we have thousands of people we always have new people tuning in showing up 
And so for some of you, this is new information, but it's my story. The reason my story is powerful is because it's mine. How did I get from where I was to where I am? How did I, how was I raised in a home that didn't know Jesus, didn't talk about God, didn't go to church, to being able to stand on a platform, walk in a call, fulfill a purpose on my life? How did I get here? Well, it started with the decision to give my life to Jesus, to recognize that I was a sinner, I was broken, I was making all kinds of bad decisions, I was running with the wrong people, doing all the bad stuff. And I reached this place where I prayed a prayer. And when I walked out of that environment, the first thing to hit me was, if I want to go there, I can't do it with them. And I'm just telling, like, growing up, the, the crew I hung around, I, like, I had lots of friends. And, and, I was, I, and I, this sounds braggadocious. It's a fact. I was very popular in high school. When I walked into a room, I was like, hey, like, I was norm walking in cheers. Some of you are too young to know that. But like husky and like I and like I didn't have a crew. I mean I had my I had my clique, my crew, but like I I could get down with the band nerds, I can get down with the jocks, I can get down with the burnouts, the god like I was good with everybody. And I realized that so many of them were walking a path that was taking them a place that I didn't want to go. And if I wanted to go a different place and go on a different path, I had to do it with different people. Some of you and some of me, we got to let some people go if we're going to walk the path to get to a place which means I reached this place where, and some of you are in this place right now, where you're recognizing God's got something new for you. God's got a new call on your life. God's got a new disposition he wants you to walk in, but you can't change because you keep hanging out with the same people. And so I didn't want to break up with anybody. I don't want to diss any friends. So I just made this decision early on, right when I saved, like, I'm still going to go to the parties, but I'm not going to party. I know it don't even make sense now saying it, but in my mind, I convinced myself. So I was like, I would stop at a 7-Eleven or a little place and I'd get a 20 ounce. And I think, while everybody else is drinking, I'm just gonna drink this 20 ounce. The problem was when I ran out for the 20 ounce, I broke out the 40 ounce. Some of you don't know what that means. So where's my 40 ounce people at? Okay, we're in church, it's okay, we tell the truth here. What, and I just reached this place where I realized that I was losing peace because of the people that was in my path. And some of you, the reason you are discontented and the reason you're not walking in the purpose that God has on your life is because the people you're walking with are pulling you on a path that's keeping you from your place. And God says that we're not to stand in the path of sinners. So who do you need to leave behind in 2021? And then here's the third thing. He says this. He says we're not to sit in the seat of the scornful. He goes from bad advice to bad associations to really just bad actions. That I know this is, this is true for my own life. There are times that, that I pick up behaviors. Um, sometimes I'll pick up this and I realize it and it's so horrible. I'll get really pithy and sharp with people, sarcastic. Is anybody else that way? And then I realize like it goes from being funny to just hurting people's feelings. And like all of a sudden that starts to be who I am. And this is what he's talking about. He's like, hey, what's the behavior in your life What's the thing that you picked up that you realize like now I'm, I'm sitting in that thing. Like it's become my identity and my purpose. He says, that's the thing, that attitude, that character, that behavior, that addiction, that habit, that hobby. He says, that thing is really, while you think it's the thing you're pursuing to make you happy, he said, it's actually the thing that's keeping you from being happy. And so I'm just telling you, man, sometimes we gotta be willing to change our behaviors because those are the things that are keeping us from being blessed. Is anybody with me today? Come on, the count of three, let's shout bless. One, two, three, bless. What's it look like to live the blessed, fulfilled, content, happy, satisfying, rich life? Well, you, there's some things that you have to say no to. Now, here's what's crazy. The writer of Psalms is, is genius in his writing. And I want you to notice just real quick that as he writes this out, and you might have caught it, he writes kind of this triple progression. He uses three lines, and each three line has three words, and each three word plays off of the next sequential section. Watch this. So he says, he says, we're not to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. We're not to stand in the path of sinners. And if you want to be blessed, we're not to sit in the seat of the scornful. So watch this. So the first sequential progress downward he is he says this he says he says people go from walking to standing to sitting which means you were headed somewhere and then you stopped 
and you started having some conversations, and next you like you sat down in that place. So you were you had some momentum, you lost some momentum. Is anybody with me? Anybody you you were headed somewhere and somehow you got hung up, you got tied up, you got tied down. And what I've just come to tell you, and as I was writing and as I was praying, I just felt like the Lord say that some of you sat down in discouragement, and some of you sat down in defeat, and some of you sat down in complacency, and some of you sat down in a bad attitude, and some of you sat down in some things God doesn't want you in. And I just feel like the Lord's saying over this house, listen, that God said, rise up, take your bed and walk. It's time to get out of where you've been sitting and start moving again. So, so watch this. So he says, he says, there's this progression that you go from walking to standing to sitting. One progression. Second pro progression, you go from, from, from the counsel of the ungodly. You go from counsel to a path to a seat. It's just conversation. And then all of a sudden it starts to shape where you're going. And again, then you sit in it. And then notice this, the third progression is it goes from the, you stand in the path or listen to the counsel of the ungodly, stand in the path of sinners, sit in the seat of the scornful. Well, this third progression is really interesting because when you go from the ungodly to the sinner to the scornful, here's what he's talking about. The ungodly is just talking about these people that just kind of live life where God's just not on the radar. Not necessarily bad people, not good people, just kind of these amoral people. But lots of people like that in our world. They make financial decisions and life decisions and relationships, and God's just not in the equation. And maybe that's you. He says, like, there's some people that's kind of where they start. And he says, then the sinner, the sinner is the person that has kind of this awareness of God. You kind of, you, you, you talk a big game, but you don't live a big game. You talk church, you don't walk church. You talk Jesus, don't live Jesus. And like you're just a sinner. So you go from not recognizing God to kind of resisting God. To the scornful, you just plain reject him. I know he's there. I know what he wants. I don't care. I'm out. And what I want you to see is that all of, us, all of us, we're on a path. We're on a journey. We talk about this so much. Lawrenceburg, we talk about this all the time here at Faith Church, that faith is a journey, not a destination. All of us, we are moving a direction. We are moving with momentum one way. Either we are moving towards a blessed life or we're moving away from a blessed life. We're either moving in the direction where we're going from, we're going from the, this person who's ungodly to being a sinner to being a scornful person. We're either going from walking to standing to sitting or we're getting up and we're we're no longer sitting and we're stopped standing. We're start moving. We're going one direction or the other. Here's the question. What direction are you going? Where is your progression? And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to feel. Has anybody ever done this before? Has anybody ever like you're, maybe you're on your phone. This happened to me the time actually I remember as I was walking in the streets of New York City. I've been to New York City a couple times. Anybody been to New York City? It's a great place to, to go hang out. If you go to the right places at the right times. Let me just ask, and Jesus, this could be your confession. Anybody buy knockoff stuff while he's in New York, like stuff that wasn't real stuff, but you paid for it anyways? I don't know if this is your experience, but they took us to this down in the whole basement, and they're like, sh like it was real hush. -up. Like, I was afraid the FBI was going to break in and take me to prison. But I'm just telling you, my wife got her knockoff purse. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> But if you've ever been walking down the road or walking somewhere and you're not really paying attention and you step and for a half a second it feels like you're about to fall along, like in you, <gasps> and you only felt like an inch. They might know I'm talking, like your blood pressure goes up and your adrenaline kicks in. It feels like you're falling. Do you know why? Because for us, falling, we associate falling with speed, like, oh. But sometimes falling isn't fast. Sometimes falling is not indicative with speed, but it's indicative with distance. And the reason I bring all this up is because some of us, we're not really where we need to be and we're moving in the wrong direction, but it doesn't feel that way because it doesn't feel fast. Like we have slowly and progressively moved in the wrong direction. And here's what God says. He's speaking to different groups or different churches in the book of Revelation. And there's one church specifically. And here's what he says. Listen to this. He says, but I have this complaint against you, church people. I have this complaint against you, faith church that you don't love me or each other as you first did. Like you started off in a good place and you started moving. And then he says this, watch this. Everybody here read it. Lawrenceburg Scholes, let's together read this. Look how far you have fallen. Sometimes you don't feel it, but other people see it. 
turn back to me and do the works that you did as first. What he's saying, he's saying, look how far you fall. Like you didn't even realize you were falling because you were falling at such a slow pace. You didn't even realize you were falling. But if you look back from where you are to where you were, like you used to have this red hot relationship with God, like you were walking right, living right. He says, but now the reason you happiness is, is, is trying to get away from you is because you're in a place where happiness can't be because you can't get counsel from ungodly people. You can't walk in the path of sinful people. You can't can't sit in the scornful place and find happiness. Happiness is not there. You got to move out of that place into a new place. If you're going to walk in the blessed life that God has for us, I want to be blessed in 2022. And that means I got to say no to some stuff I've been saying yes to. He says this, some stuff we say no to, then we can say yes. Everybody say yes. Here's what we say yes to. There's things we decline. Here's what we delight in. But his delight, here's the yes but his delight, her delight, our delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He's saying part of the place that we find peace, what sets us on the path and the journey of happiness, what puts us in the place to pursue this fulfillment, this contentment that we all want. He says it comes from us loving the law of the Lord, from us loving, and this is, this is becoming increasingly foreign in the nation and the generation we live. Like he's saying, man, we gotta just get back where we're just leaning into God's word. He's saying we gotta get back to the place where we are regularly and consistently leaning into what God has to say. God's word, I know some of us in this, in this room in Lawrenceburg or shows like, you never read your Bible. I'm just telling you, start somewhere. If you're new to the Bible, don't feel bad. If you've been in church your whole life and you never, don't feel bad. The devil's trying to keep you out. Like, just determine, like, hey, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna set some small goals and I'm just gonna start leaning in. Start in the book of Luke. Start in the book of Mark. Just great stories of the life of Jesus that'll inspire you. If you've been reading the Bible for a while, then don't stop, keep going. But find yourself leaning into God's word because as you read God's word, God's word reads you. There's all these, man, as you read God's word, God's word describes itself several ways, and I have found it's true, that God's word is a hammer that breaks some stuff in me. God's word is a light that reveals some stuff in me. God's word is a fire that purifies some stuff, some stuff in me. God's word is an anchor, come on, that anchors me during difficult times and seasons. And so as you lean into God's word, like, it, again, it starts to change us. If you want to know, if you want to know the God of the word, you got to read the word of God. And as you start peeling back and moving pages and start moving through, I'm telling you, it'll start to change who you are. And as you do it, this is so important. It doesn't say read the word. It says meditate. Everybody say meditate. It doesn't mean, oh, I do my legs, but I would never be able to get up again. I'd still be here next Sunday when you came back. <laughs> 50 and limber are contradictory definitions of terms. <laughs> He says meditate. Everybody say meditate. Here's what meditate means. Meditate means to kind of find this, this thing. When you read God's word, here's something you always need to ask. Are you ready? Don't just read it. Ask yourself these questions. What is the promise to grab a hold of? What's the sin to repent of? What's the prayer to pray? What's the example to follow? What's the commandment to obey? So as you're answering these questions, like you're gonna, something's gonna pop out at you and then you just hang on that thing and you just meditate on it. And the word meditate means to kind of, kind of mull it over, kind of mumble it under your breath. And it's kind of like the picture of a cow chewing cud or a person, anybody else, how many people, where are my fast eaters at? Lawrenceburg, if you raise, raise, if you eat fast, like you already have your food done before like everybody else even cuts their steak. We don't like you. How many people enjoy your meal? Wave at me. Yeah. Anybody here ever get a good piece of something? Let's, come on. Like, I'm not talking like obnoxious. You're like, hmm. Like, you literally fear yourself like, hmm. Let me tell you, my mom, she's a, my mom is the greatest lady on the planet. She's always made home cook everything her whole life. It was an impossible standard for my wife to meet. My wife has risen to the occasion over the years. One of my favorite things that my mom makes for me, and I don't get them very often because I don't get back to Ohio very often, and so usually if I make it there around my birthday, once a year, my mom will make me one of her homemade chocolate cakes. If that doesn't impress you, it's because you've not tasted it. And the likelihood of me sharing it with you is slim to none. And so because my mom, she's, you know, she's in her late 70s. I hope she's here for another 50 years. But like at some point, I'm not going to get any more chocolate cakes. So now when I get one, this is true. Like I just don't like, huh. <laughs> Man, when I was a kid, I was like, oh. But now, I just had one about two months ago. Man, I cut it off. 
homemade icing, homemade cake. Oh. You don't put the milk in too, it, milk's got to show up. But don't put it in too fast. Mm. Y'all can taste it, can't you? Chocolate cake sales are going up in Middle Tennessee and Northwest Alabama today. And I'm just telling you, it's like, mmm, I can just taste my, and it's got just this distinct. And God, what God's saying is, man, there's some stuff that's holding you back. You can't find what it means to really be content and blessed and happy because you got some stuff in you and around you and on you that you need to say no to. So you start saying yes. And as you say yes, like, God, you are, God, this is who you are, man. God, you, with God, all things are possible. I mean, I'm just going to meditate on that. God can do anything. God is a good God. God is a God of righteousness and joy and peace. And I know who I am. I'm a child of God. I'm created in his image. I'm called by his purpose. I'm filled with his spirit. And I just start thinking about this. That, I'm, that'll change your day, that'll change your week, and that'll change your year when you start meditating on who God is, what God has to say about who he is, and what God has to say about who you are. Come on, that's how you find out you're blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And so we just have to get in this place where we just kind of start navigating that. And then he says this, so if you'll, you'll say no to some stuff. How many people realize there's some stuff you need to say no to? Wave at me. You got some stuff, Lawrence Burr Schultz? How many people need to start saying yes to the word? Notice there wasn't a lot of stuff. Just say yes to God's word. I, I got to lean in. He says, if you'll say no to some stuff and say yes to some stuff, watch this. Here's the description we have to look forward to. This is the blessed life. This is what it looks like. He, she, they shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in due season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Now, some of you are like, I'm sitting in English class, and I don't even know what they just read. <laughs> He's saying this. He's saying if, there, if, you'll, if you'll pursue peace and you'll pursue purpose and you'll pursue happiness the right way, he says, here's what you have to look forward to. He says, you'll be growing. You'll be prosperous. He says, and you'll be fixed. Let me talk about those for a minute. Growing means like you're not stuck anymore. Have you ever just been stuck? It feels like you just can't move. You can't make any progress. He says, when you start saying no to some stuff and yes to some stuff, he says, you'll find yourself, you're going to be like a tree that you just start growing and branching out and moving in areas you've never been in before. And you not only grow, but he says, you'll be fixed. This is so important because a lot of us at Faith Church, come on, we, we're up and down. We're in and out. We're on the mountain. Then we're in the valley. We got emotional highs and emotional lows. Some days we're at church and then there's a lot of days we're not at church and some days we read the word and some days we don't. Come on, some days we're in bad habits and then we try to get out. Come on, he's saying, listen, if you wanna find yourself fixed, you're tired of being washed back and forth, in and out, up and down. He says, if you'll find yourself in God's word, he said, you're gonna be like a tree that's planted. You know what that means? Anybody here got a childhood tree? Like you can go back to that field, that neighborhood, that area and the tree that was there when you was a kid, you carved your name on it, used to climb it. Anybody know I'm talking? I got a tree. If you go there today, you know where that tree is? It didn't move down the road. You won't show me like, where's that tree? Oh, it, it moved. It's over on First Avenue. No, that tree is, do you know why? Because trees are fixed. And God says, some of you are all over the place, emotionally and spiritually and physically. He says, you're everywhere. And how can you be everywhere else and find peace? Peace is a person, and peace is found in a place. There's nothing worse, because I've experienced emotional highs and lows. So wrestling in my own mind of, am I doing okay? Am I messing my kids up? How's my marriage? Big decisions. Do we go to two campuses, three campuses? Do I buy this building? Lord, what do you want me to do? I'm about to bankrupt this church. We're about to break out. Which is it, Lord? And I just got to find what is the Lord calling me to do? And when I do what God called me to do, and I hear God's voice, and I try to walk that out, and I got to say, no, I know you wouldn't do that. What's God calling me to do? Start to walk the blessed life. And so some of us in this room, yeah, all of us want to be blessed. All of us want to be happy. The reason it's evading us and the reason we're making resolutions, trying to adjust and get there. Some of the adjustments you're going to make will never get you there until you stop walking in the counsel of the ungodly, stop standing in the path of sinners, and stop sitting in the seat of the swamp. And until you start meditating on God's law day and night, meditate just thinking about who he is and who he's called you to be. He says, then 
you're going to be like a tree planted by the waters. You're going to grow and you're going to be fixed. He says you're going to be fruitful, which means your life is going to actually start looking like what you talk about. You're going to quit talking about it and you're going to start being about it. You're going to put up so you don't have to shut up. I'm going to really live this thing out. I'm going to quit claiming to be a Christian by title and I'm going to be a Christian by example. That's what I want. And this is a cool thing. I don't know if you caught this. He says this again. He says, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Everybody say rivers. We live on a river. Lots of you spend time on it. Have you ever noticed how peaceful bodies of water are? Two years ago, we moved into a new subdivision, brand new home. God bless us with a beautiful home. First thing we did was we dug a $25,000 hole in the backyard filled with water, put in a swimming pool. Here's what's crazy is I have been in our, in two years, I have been in our swimming pool probably three times. Now my wife's in it all the time, kids are in it. But here's what's funny is I'm out on our deck all the time and I just sit there and there's just something peaceful about sitting by that pool. I can't explain it. And some of you have experienced it. That's why you go on the river. And that's why a lot of us, when we go on vacation, we go to the ocean. Has anybody ever realized, Lawrence Burr, so have you ever realized how peaceful it is to be by water? Anybody ever realize that? Here's what's crazy. There's actually a psychology to it. It's called, it's called, uh, it's called the blue, blue health or the blue mind. And what's really crazy about it is psychologists and scientists and psychiatrists and psychologists, they all write about it and talk about it. They recognize when you're by a body of water, your brain waves actually change. This peace settles over you. They can't really explain why, they can just say it's there. And I started thinking about it. When you read God's word, God's word often talks about us being planted by rivers of water. God talks about us leading us beside the still streams. Jesus did most of his ministry by water, on the water, by the water, by the Sea of Galilee. There's water everywhere. Jesus claimed to be the living water, which means some of us in this room, the thing you need most that's keeping you from happiness the most is you have no peace. So he says, come on, come and plant yourself by me. And if you can find some mental peace sitting by a body of water, what kind of peace you think you'll find if you come and plant yourself next to me for a little while? And so I just came to tell you, peace in 2022. Lawrenceburg, peace in 2022. Shoals, peace in 2022. It can be found. Happiness. You can be happy if you'll do it God's way. I'll close with this. He says this. The last three verses are in contrast to the first so this is what the blessed person looks like, but not the wicked. The worthless, like worthless chaff scattered by the wind. They will be condemned at the time of judgment. Sinners will have no place among the, the godly. For the Lord watches over the path of the godly, but the path of the wicked leads to, everybody say that leads to. So notice the first word is blessed. And the last word is destruction. He says, you get to choose. You can either be fixed, fruitful and growing or you can be failing, falling, and chaff. You choose. So let me ask one more time. How many people want to have the rich and satisfying life that Jesus said he wants us to have? As we step into 2022, every single year, so I've been here really for the last 20 years of leading a church, I always start the year. Again, if you want to recalibrate, there's no better place to recalibrate. You can do money and relationships and physical health, but the best place you can start with is your relationship with Jesus. And so here's what I'm asking for everybody that calls Faith Church home is for starting tomorrow for 14 days, we're going to go into a season of prayer and fasting. If you're new to Jesus, new to church, this will sound really radical, but Jesus was really radical. That means for the next 14 days, we're going to set aside an obscene amount of time to seek God in prayer, and we're actually going to fast. Fasting is not eating for a spiritual purpose. It's not not eating to lose weight. It's saying, I'm gonna say no to food. I know my body's demanding food, but I'm gonna give it spiritual food. I'm gonna say no to a meal for a day, for a couple days, a couple meals, breakfast, Monday, Wednesday, whatever you do, or maybe you just need to say no to Netflix and make time for Jesus. Whatever it is, say no to something so you can say yes to something else. For 14 days, I wanna invite all of you to join us. Decide today, pray today, Lord, what does he want me to fast for the next 14 days? and write it down. Don't determine day to day because you'll keep moving it. I promise. Decide today. And then join us for prayer.
for the next 14 days, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. here at both campuses, at our Shoals campus and here at our Florence campus. I want to encourage you. And you're like, 6 a.m. Is Jesus even up at 6 a.m.? We're going to find out together. And you have my permission. Come however you are. Just get out of bed and come. Unless you sleep commando, don't come like that. You got to put something on. No hate. That is how it is. And if don't, girls, don't feel like you got to put any makeup on or your eyelashes. Now, don't be mad if people don't talk to you. We, we may not recognize you. You look different without makeup. Come on, don't be mad. Y'all know that's true. <laughs> Wheels are coming off this thing late. <laughs> but just come, 6 a.m. I know that's early. If you can't stay, we're going to meet for an hour, Monday through Friday, Saturday at 9 a.m. The next two Saturdays, 9 a.m. 6 a.m., Monday through Friday, next two weeks, both Saturdays, 9 a.m. Just come. If you can only stay for 20 minutes, but most of us, we can probably get in. We'll, we'll do a short Devo do a little bit of worship, and we're just going to chase God in prayer. Just get our hearts. We're just going to meditate. We're just going to meditate on his word. We're just going to lean into his presence. We're going to be that tree planted by the water. Feels like I'm, feels like I'm pitching a vacation, doesn't it? Because it will be. I promise you, some of you going to find some happiness and peace in the first 14, 14 days that will set the pace for the year. So I want to invite you to come. I'm going to put you on the spot. Don't raise your hand for peer pressure. But if you're like, Pastor, I'm on board. This is, this is my church. You're my pastor. This is the place God's called me at. I'm committed to pray for us. I'm committed to fast for us for the best year, 2022. If you're on board here, I want you to lift your hand, whatever location you're at, real high. Say, Pastor, I'm on board. You can count on me. The rest of you not raising your hand, pray about it. Find a spot. If you lift a hand, do your best to be here. If you can't be here in person, you can join us online. Those prayer services will be broadcast. But if you can be here, be here. Join us online. If you can't because you work a crazy schedule, find some other time during the day. Lean into, be a, be a tree that's planted and watch what God does to get us ready for 2022. In Jesus' name. Father, we love you, God. Thank you for all that you want to do. I declare happiness, contentment, joy, fulfillment over every life at every campus and every person watching online. Lord, fill us with your presence. Show us the things we need to say no to. Help us start saying yes to your word. Father, I pray that God, surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. In Jesus' name.